So in reviewing some things about this household assets and bases lab, one of the things that we saw was that there were a, several things that said indicator in them. So I want you to watch this little clip real quick here. And this is a nifty little demo we call the rainbow tube. He's got a solution there that he's putting in a nice glass tube. And as you can see, it's kind of oh, an emerald green color. Okay, so he just said he has what he's calling substance A. And he's putting four drops of substance A in that one side of the tube. And if you look carefully, you can see it's having a little effect. And in case you're wondering, that substance A he dropped in was colorless. Now he's taking another thing he's calling substance B, which is also colorless, and he's putting eight drops of that in the tube. And ta-da! Isn't it beautiful? Chemistry is a beautiful thing. Okay, so what we just saw was universal indicator was what he started with in that uh, rainbow tube. And universal indicator is a really interesting indicator because instead of just being two different colors, it has the potential to be any possible color of the rainbow. And so depending on what the pH is, so by adding the different substances to the different sides of that tubes, he was able to make a section of the tube the one end of the tube was very highly acidic where he added the strong acid and so we got the red on that color and then as we were getting more to the neutral section we got more oranges and then we had the section in the middle which wasn't really touched much which was pretty neutral to begin with so that was green and then as we got more towards the basic side, it got a little more bluish, and then finally towards a purple. So universal indicator is pretty cool. It comes in liquid solution like we used in our lab. You can also get it in the paper strip solution that you dip in, just like the litmus paper, and it will change the variety of colors. So that's very interesting stuff. Um, there are many other acid-base indicators besides just the universal. The most famous is litmus, being either pink or blue that you've played with. Uh, the universal that we just looked at, which can not only tell you whether it's an acid or a base, but can give you some idea if it is a strong acid or if it's a weak acid. So a little bit more info given from the universal indicator. Another popular one that we use is phenolphthalein, giving that nice fuchsia color sometimes. Um, and there's many, many other indicators that are out there. Now, interesting thing I want you to notice from this chart is that it's not like these indicators are all one color in acids and different colors in bases. Notice, again, 7 is the cutoff point, so this is neutral, so everything on the top half above 7 is a base and everything below 7 is acids so notice that litmus is very interesting because it does change where at that point it will be uh, red if it's in an acidic solution and that blue if it's in a basic solution but other things such as methyl violet 
uh, it doesn't change until a pH of around 1. So methyl violet is a great thing to figure out if you have a strong acid or not, because if methyl violet is in a strong acid, it's going to turn that yellow color like we see down there. Or if it is a um, not a strong acid, anywhere a pH of 2 or bigger, it's going to be that violet color. So they don't just change. They have different places where they change. And depending on what we want to know, different indicators might be useful for different things. Now, in addition to just acid-base indicators, indicators are something that we use for quite a few things in uh, many different times in life. And one of the last questions on your lab sheet asks you to think of some times outside of chemistry class where you have used an indicator, a color indicator, something that will change different colors to indicate what kind of environment it's in. And hopefully some of you were able to come up with some of these examples, such as swimming pools or hot tubs where you've dipped this stuff in. And in your swimming pool, you're typically take, uh, testing for two things. One thing that you might be monitoring is the pH of your pool. So you, you dip this in your pool and you, yeah, you, you look at the water and you add some drops of one of the things in there and you see what color it matches. And depending on what shade of color uh, matches the chart, you can say, all right, the pH, in this case it looks like it's about 7.2. So one thing we wanted to monitor of our pools is what's the pH. We don't want it to be too strongly acidic nor too basic, so we monitor pH. Of course, another thing that's important to monitor in pools are your chlorine levels. Um, so uh, same type of thing. There's a different bottle that you have in your kit, and you put some drops of that. You, you pick up your pool water in there, put a few drops of that solutions in, and it turns yellow. And again, depending on what shade uh, yellow, that one may be, uh, it, it lets you know what your chlorine levels are, so you need to adjust your levels of chlorine. So that is one very quick kind of indicator. It's pretty cheap, easy uh, to use, to test these. We don't need big, fancy electronic devices to do this. How about some other things where you may have had some examples of indicators that you could think of being used? All right, guess it doesn't want to play. All right, well, uh, I was supposed to show you a video of some color-changing straws. Some of you may have had those at Friendly's where when they get cold, they turn one color, and when they're warmer, they turn a different color. Um, another example that I had when my kids were younger was this little rubber ducky, and it normally, um, it normally was all blue on the bottom. I'm sorry, give me a second here. Um, but when you put it in water, if the water was really, really hot, there was a certain section of this that would actually turn white, and it would spell out hot. So we would know, oh, it's too hot for the little kiddos to go in there, so we need to let it cool off some. So that's a, a temperature indicator. Some of you may be familiar with commercials uh, from the Coors Light, how the mountains will turn blue if it's properly chilled and it's very, very cold. Um, I think that's what they do. Um, so uh, there's a color indicator, temperature indicator that they have there where it changes colors depending on what temperature things are in. Some of you may have seen a thermometer type of a thing like this. Sometimes you put these on your fish, fish tanks, and depending on what the temperature of the water is, different colors show up to let you know what temperature that is. Um, of course, most of us are probably familiar with mood rings, which... Um, probably don't really indicate mood. They probably do respond either to the type of light that's hitting them uh, or to a temperature issue. Uh, you know, maybe when you're angry, you get a different color, and so a different color appears on the mood ring. So those are just some examples of some indicators where we use. Um, a few other ones, a lot of medical applications, because a lot of these are some really cheap, quick ways to do some tests um, very quickly. Um, pregnancy tests. You know, instead of having to go to the doctor and get an informal checkout, these are pretty cheap to buy. And depending on if you're pregnant, there's a certain hormone that's present. And uh, so when you do a test on this, if that hormone is present, it causes, I don't know, I forget whether it's one or both of those lines or the little pink heart to show up depending on what kind of kit you have. But that color will show up if you're pregnant. And so that is a good test for that. Very cheap way to do that. Um, 
the doctors use these types of things as well. Uh, when they take your urine sample, what they can do is they can take some of those pads uh, and they dip them in your urine sample and the pads have a bunch of, um, the little strips have a bunch of different pads on them and they'll test for different things like ketone levels and depending on if you're dehydrated, you're how high your ketone levels are, they'll be able to match the color there and determine your level of dehydration, uh, as well as drug testing and other things. Uh, indicators are very, very useful. So it's not just always acid-base indicators. There's a lots of different examples where we use color indicators and chemistry to indicate something. So that's some, some ideas, some things that you should have listed there on the bottom of your household acids and bases lab.